Matthew Deborah, I think we should start with last year, and you weren't the only ones who said it, obviously, and you got a lot right, by the way. Um, but what do you think? What, what happened last not to show year? Those kids. <laughs> yeah, we didn't show. What, what happened last year, Deborah? That the, 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 the pundits did get Corbyn wrong. The central thing that happened was younger voters turned out to vote. And, you know, when you're predicting what's going to happen in an election, the best tools that you have are how people have behaved last time, right? So what we all did, and this is why it wasn't just pollsters, but it was politicians, it was canvassers, everybody out there kind of read the runes wrongly because everybody was assuming that young people as they have done in the past, had said they were going to vote, and yes, they would support Labour, and then not turn out. And this time, the experts were confounded and they did mm. turn out. That was the single thing that made the biggest And the really interesting question, and Matthew, have a go at this. Will young people turn out next time? Or what, what would be the working assumption now? Well, I don't know why you're asking us, as we got it so wrong <laughs> last time. We should get some new pundits in well, we could this talk time. Pfizer but, in a minute. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> I, I, I think you should never underestimate the Conservative Party's capacity to fail to enthuse the population and it wasn't just Jeremy Corbyn's success but the Conservative Party just didn't didn't fizz and I think younger people want a bit of fizz and perhaps we all underestimated the hunger for that. Mm. Pfizer, what, what, what do you think happened? I mean and, and how do you think these rules, these new rules that prevailed last year will last? Will we go back to the old style of business or do you think it'll be? I think we make a mistake when we make this about individuals or specifics of of rules. What's happened is that a number of conservative ideologies, whether they be about the way we run the economy, whether it be about the way in, this, in which austerity has spectacularly failed and cost people in society, um, or whether it be, you know, the setup on Brexit, it's that a lot of people can see that these ideas aren't delivering anymore. Things have changed. How do we expect young people to support market fundamentalism when they themselves don't have any capital. You can't be capitalist when you don't have any capital, right? So, you know, we, we look at this, in, this issue of young people or we, we, you know, chalk it up to individuals, but there's something much deeper here and it's about the way in which uh, the, the, the plates of society and the economy are shifting. So it's a substantive, it, it, it's the, for the time because the things have changed and people just change their views accordingly. Look, okay, there are three battles in politics, within the Tories, within Labour, and between Tories and Labour. And let's go back to the Tories. Ian Dale, we didn't play your election predictions, Ian. No, just as well. Pretty, pretty <laughs> bad. Um, Ian, look, the Tories have held it together for the last yep. year. Do you think they get through 2018 intact as a party? I think Theresa May's objective was to make it to Christmas. She made it to Christmas, <laughs> quite unbelievably in some ways, that the chance to get rid of her was on June the 9th, and they didn't do that. And since then, there hasn't been a sort of king or queen over the water. There isn't a single person that the Tory party could unite around uh, and replace uh, Theresa May with. And that's still the case now. And I think that will probably still be the case this time next year. So I think she will still be in position. And I think she's in a lot stronger position than people actually think. I think she's in a strong enough position now to carry out quite a wide-ranging reshuffle. On the basis she can say, well, OK, I dare you to get rid of me. Including Boris, she... including Boris including Boris and including the Chancellor. I think she can move both of them, but I certainly think she can move one of them. So, and the big battles over Brexit, I might regret saying this, the big battles have kind of been had in 2017. The big battle this year will be in the House of Lords, and that could be a lot trickier for Theresa May than anybody realises, because we have this two-year Parliament. So they can't invoke the Parliament Act until after we've left the EU, right. until after the, the, the deal has been done. In, so in that, the only way out of that is if the House of Lords really cut up rough, the only way out of that is a general election. Mm. I, I rather question your confidence in her longevity. She's like a ping-pong ball balanced on a fountain. No, she's like she has a weeble. She wobbles, but she never falls <laughs> she down. Ha well, she has no weight of her own. And, and one stumble, one accident, and accidents happen in politics, I think. But there have been so many, haven't there, since the election. You look at how she stumbled over mm. Grenfell. You look at the, the various machinations over Brexit. I think she's got through those. And but you're I right. Mean, if what's this Brexit's all sort of sorted out now? I mean, I mean, come on, we've got... We we're going to say that. We're going to be <laughs> confronted with Norway or Canada. Pfizer, what's going yeah, to happen? Yeah, I mean, really, the conversation about Brexit this year will throw up so much, yes, in the House of Lords, uh, but also in terms of trade. And trade isn't just about the movement of goods anymore. It's also going to be about, you know, that issue of movement of people. And, and, and just uh, so much is going to be have to undone and redone this year. And 
when we have a Conservative Party that isn't united, that doesn't have a vision for Brexit... And Labour does? I think that Labour is in a really? much better position to really? offer something different. What does and easy I think... movement mean? Because that, that seems to be their solution. Easy well, movement. No one can define I, it. I'm going to come to Labour and I want to just focus on the Tories. Because, I mean, mm. Deborah Pattinson, do you think there's a Brexit? that holds the Tory party together, that there's one that can satisfy all of them? No, I mean, I think... On offer. No, I th I, actually, to be fair, though, I don't think there's one that holds the Labour Party together <laughs> either. <laughs> right. um, and that's the mm. problem. I mean, our, our work at Britain Thinks says there are three groups of people. There's a group of people we call the diehards, who are very passionate about Brexit. There's a group of people we call the devastated pessimists, who sort of have their heads on their desks and are beside themselves with sorrow. There are about a third each, and then there's a third in the middle who are sort of swing voters, um, who are a bit more relaxed either way. You, it's very hard to envisage any kind of solution well, I can. That, I can. Will, that will keep oh, everybody happy. I, I think there is a Brexit that, that can uh, more or less reconcile the Conservative Party, and so I'm, I'm with Ian. This, this issue may, may never really explode. Uh, the Brexit that will, in the end, satisfy the Conservative Party is that we formally leave the European Union, but to all intents and purposes, <laughs> stay within the European <laughs> Union. But, and, but uh, that but won't that satisfy... Yeah. That must that satisfy, satisfy, satisfy you. Come it wouldn't satisfy me. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt whether it would satisfy many others. What we have problem. to do, we have to reel people like you in, like a fish, very gradually, <laughs> as realism slowly... I'm not very down. reelable. Wow. <laughs> so this is another area where, again, the Conservatives have are not going to deliver. They've built up these promises and they are going to fail uh, and people are going to be angry about okay. that. Well, let's come to Labour then, Pfizer, because, I mean, Labour have held it together basically by not saying anything, really, on, on, on anything. Have they? I mean, they, and, and that might be the right tactic, is just to, to, to stay quiet and let the Tories... You know, make... Well, of course. I mean, of course, there's political tactics. I think the thing that's really clear about what Labour offered in the last election and what really worked was when the manifesto came out and they talked about, you know, bringing rail back into public ownership. They talked about housing. They talked about what they would do with homelessness and education and the NHS. And they offered something different to people. They offered something different to young people. Right. They you offered know, the, bribes. The, that's yeah. what they offered. Unfunded bribes. No, they offered a different way in which to run the economy. Yeah. One that runs More for the people. More money everything and people it, bought it. It's more than that though, isn't it? There was a poll yesterday that suggested that more people feel that Labour, Labour's values are closely matched to their own values, many more than, than feel the same about the Conservatives. But that then begs a bigger question, which is if that's the case, how come the Conservatives are polling so much further ahead of their own values? Why is it match? basically level pegging and why, Yeah, I mean, and, and the polls are stubbornly... And, and Theresa May still outranks Jeremy Corbyn as best Prime Minister. He, Matthew, by, by quite some mile. way. Actually, yes. Can you envisage Labour pulling significantly ahead to the kind of level that... Yes, I can, because uh, I can't underestimate the Conservative Party's ability to disgust the electorate. We're going to see in the London elections in May yeah. what happens to the Tories in London. And uh, the, the British people may want to vote for a mangy aardvark rather than vote for the present Conservative <laughs> Party. My party. That's what worries me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is this the year where we get off Brexit as a conversation. Is it no. possible that we can talk about something? I'm, I'm just going to... Yeah. You know, the, the headlines of the newspapers tomorrow. NHS tells hospital to cancel all routine operations in the Telegraph. Winter crisis cripples NHS in the mail. Yes. Guardian on the same topic. We, Brexit is ahead as the issue that people are most concerned about, right, at 51%. But the NHS is now 45%. It's the highest it's been for 16 years. And I think it's rising up and people are, are getting more and more concerned. It, and it relates to Brexit as well. Right. People link the two together. You They're worried bummed, about shafts. You've just the NHS a few billion more as an emergency <laughs> and the immediate crisis subsides. And it doesn't solve the problem, but I think it takes it out of the headlines. That's what they'll do. It's what they always do. Yeah, but people yeah. are using the NHS. This is the thing that I think people get wrong, is that the public are constantly yeah. using these services. They've seen and it a time change lag over time, the going in and, and they're frustrated, and that's what's happening. They're not just going to be upset about Brexit. They're going to be upset about seeing more homeless people on the street, yeah. about how difficult it is to get yeah. appointments. And so 2018 is going to be a year where these trends and the mistakes and the defunct ideology of the Conservatives and their policies are going to play out and annoy I, Education people. is at the highest level in people's concerns for, for 10 years. Years, housing is at the highest yeah. level of concern uh, since the 70s, the whereas the economy is something that's not being and talked about. That's a real about. challenge for mm -hmm. Theresa May, and, and I think yeah. a lot does depend on who she appoints as her deputy, if she, even if she does that, because she needs to effectively own the Brexit agenda. There need, it's a bit like the Second World War. There needs to be a, a Churchill in charge, and I accept 
you, I can't really compare Theresa May to Winston Churchill, but Attlee handled all of the domestic politics during the Second World War. There needs to be a sort of Attlee figure who can run domestic policy, and there isn't that at the moment. Mm. Um, where, where, where does this... Where do you think this ends this year? I mean, do, 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 any, of you, do any of you expect a general election this year? I mean, does it go... You all no. said no last no. year, no. by the way. And, uh, and uh, only if the House of Lords <laughs> really does play up. Mm. That's it. I can't foresee other circumstances. And, 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 and political parties intact at the end of this year? Sort of. Just We all just carry We're stumbling, just stumbling on. on. I mean, this is a sort of muddled through end. scenario. With, with no new leaders, you mean? Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is yeah. such I, a shame, I isn't it? For uh, such a crucial time for this country, we're essentially going to be yeah. treading water. And, well, it's less of a shame. And what I'm about third parties? Do, do, any of you, uh, we disagree about do, do any of you think another party, a third party, a new politics, there have been a sort of a few... No, I mean, there's a greater polarisation oh, into no. the two-party politics, which mm. is, which yeah, is extraordinary. Yeah, but changed, right? And Corbyn so it's a new Labour. very different, yeah, right? New a new new Labour, yeah, yeah, yeah but, yeah. I mean, essentially, there is something very different here on offer that speaks to people's concerns and their needs and their worries for the future. Why are they 20 future? points ahead in the yes, polls? Yes, exactly, I... I... I think that too. And that's a good question on which we will we will finish. <laughs> but look, it is muddled through essentially and, 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 and finish the year where we start. Thank you all very much and happy new year.